Hello, everyone. Welcome to Listening to the Wind, IWSA's interview series. And I'm really delighted to welcome Nicholas Abiven today, a senior project engineer at Chantier d'Atlantique, who's in charge of the development of sails and rigs. Uh, Nicholas started sailing 50 years ago, uh, then studied marine engineering, specializing in hydrodynamics. And after graduation, he started his career in a professional sailing team, winning the Amer uh, Admiral's Cup and the Transat Jacques Verbre. Uh, he then moved into his uh, current career uh, at Chantier d'Atlantique, and he's been there for nearly 20 years. Nicholas, I'm delighted to welcome you. Yes, thank you, Gavin. Okay, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, your presentation today and discussing a little bit about your project and a little bit about wind propulsion in general. But without further ado, I'll hand over to you and I believe you have a video for us and you're going to be stopping that and talking us through the project as it goes. So I'll see you on the other side. Yeah, over so to I will share my, my, my screen. Uh, with a video of the of the of the week that we are um, building now. So do you see my video, Gavin? Yes, I do. Le okay, good. So the uh, I, I just stop it for the moment just to to uh, explain you with with a few words where we are. So we we started um, to uh, to work on the um, on uh, larger sails and rigs. Uh, Something like ten years ago in Chantier Atlantic, and we decided to move on. Um, let us say on the concrete part of the of the job. Uh, um, five years ago, when we we saw that we had made um, enough developments on a, on a risk analysis and so far, and that we we have to move uh, on uh, on real things, and uh, we we started very very small. We we just uh, um, made a sail, a solid sail. Uh, I will explain later the concept of solid sail. Uh, so we made a, a, um, a small 20 square meter solid sail at first, just to, to be tested on an on eight meter sailing, sailing yacht, um, just to prove that the concept was working. So it was in um, September, October 2016, if I well remember. And it gave us uh, very good uh, results. So we decided to move forward. And then we, um, we made a 150 square meters one to be tested on the, the Naimoka boat, you know, the, the sailing yachts uh, used for the um, Vendée Globe series uh, around the world. And uh, so again, this worked well. You could see some, some um, uh, small technical issues, but we could fix them. And uh, so, so this was in um, June or October 2007, uh, no, 2017, so sorry. And after that, we installed uh, a 200 square meter solid sail on the, the cruising ship Le Podin for, um, so this one has been tested for one full year from October 2018 to October 2019, uh, it went through the Atlantic twice and, uh, and, um, and it made a very, uh, uh, it, it worked very well. And after that, we had uh, learned a lot um, in the design of the sail on uh, how to, uh, uh, to improve the uh, aerodynamic shape. Uh, under pressure, and then we so we 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 um, we decided to uh, to develop a new uh, new version, and so this uh, this new version we call it Solid State Two Two Point Zero, <laughs> um, and so I think that you saw some videos on the on photos because we installed a, a one point a one two five scale. Um, uh, ballast on rig on the, um, in uh, very close to our shipyard in San there just to test everything. And so this has been tested now um, since um, one one year or something like this. 
maybe more, I don't remember actually. Um, on, at the same time, we, we had the chance that our top management um, um, decided to, uh, to put a very significant budget on the, on the table so that we could uh, fully study on fabricate, uh, on test, as a first uh, full-scale rig, uh, which will uh, which will um, uh, consist in a, um, in a rig able to support 1,500 square meters of sails. So what you have on the video, no, I will start the video. So what you have on the video is what is is uh, being built uh, right now. So obviously this is an animation video uh, that we made a few months ago. But if you come today in Saint Nazaire, uh, you will already see the, um, the bottom part of the of the rig, which is uh, already erected, on uh, on which is starting its um, its test on the, the mast here, on the, the solid sail, on the soft sail here, uh, will be installed uh, during summertime. Um, uh, end, end of um, end of August, and so the, the full rig will be uh, operating uh, in Saint Nazaire from uh, early September, mid September. Uh, so let, let's have a look on the on the video. So you 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 you, you can see that our rig is um, is made of. Um, is based on uh, what we call a balustron uh, or aero rig uh, concept, which is uh, which has not been developed by uh, Chantier Atlantique, but which is existing since uh, since years. I think the first one maybe were something like 1925, so it's a very long time ago. Uh, but it's, it has not been very uh, developed because it's. Uh, it's not well adapted to small uh, ships or especially uh, uh, for yachting. This is making very complex uh, on AV installations. So it's, um, it, it has not been uh, used very much. Um, um, maybe, let us say maybe in the world you can find something like 200 or 300 uh, uh, sailing boats equipped with this, but uh, not really more. Uh, but for cruising, uh, for commercial ships, as a cruising or, or freight uh, vessel of, of any type, this is a very um, interesting uh, solution because it, it allows to completely, you know, um, um, it allows to the, 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 the captain of the ships to, to get rid of the the wind direction and just uh, on just uh, keep keep, uh, keep going with the ship, and, and if the the wind is um, is um, is changing its direction, or if the ships have to change its uh, its own direction, um, it just has to rotate the, the ballast on to adapt to adapt it to the um, to the new condition of operation. So it's it is very safe and very uh, easy to use. So this is why we decided to go uh, for this technology. Uh, so, but again, this has not been invented by Chantil Atlantic. Uh, this is just um, uh, an old solution that we, um, we decided to use. On we, we, regarding the, the sail, uh, so we, we developed what we, we have called solid sail. So I will We'll move a bit forward in the video to show you the. Okay, stop here. So the solid say is um, is um, is a um, type of a membrane cell, so a thin uh, um, a thin membrane cell. And be the difference with a classic uh, say cloth cell uh, that you we see everywhere is that solid say this is built from uh, individual panels. You can see, you can see, you know, where is my mouse here? There are some kind of hinges that we can see. So the, let us say that the, the sail in general is divided in um, between 
10 and 15 uh, panels, depending on, on the size of the, of the mast. On uh, each of these panels are, are completely uh, flat when they are um, uh, not submitted to, uh, to wind pressure. Uh, so um, when you put some uh, wind pressure by giving some incidence to the, to the ballast run, then the sail will get some, uh, some volume on the volume that we're reaching is, is uh, completely similar to a classic uh, soft sail. So for specialists, let us say we are between 9% um, uh, of uh, curvature in the, in the lower part and we go up to um, uh, on, in the upper part of the say we are something like two to three percent of, uh, of volume, which is um, which are numbers that are very similar to to classic say. Um, the, the, uh, so we, we we decided to to develop this um, this type of sales for for two reasons uh, principally. Uh, the first one is that the there is a limit in the uh, in the tension that you can take on a on a classic soft say, which is uh, um, around forty tons in the in the crew. Uh, and after that, we the the technology of uh, classic say is um, does not owe, does not know how to deal with uh, with higher higher effort. So th this was the first. Um, point that pushed us to develop something different. Another thing is that when uh, classic soft sail is, um, is adding uh, at zero incidence into the wind, so the, then the, the sail will, um, um, I don't know the, the, the term in English for this, uh, the, the sails will, will flap into the wind and this will, um, on this, can be very um, a very uh, energetic 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 sorry movement on um, on um, and so this might be a bit dangerous for the rig and the um, on uh, on the crew so we saw that it was a uh, we had to to find solution to uh, to get rid of these uh, issues and. Um, and also the on the third point um, um, that made us um, develop this uh, solid say tag is that we um, dividing the says in uh, in different uh, uh, panels that are fabricated. Um, I mean, uh, in uh, in workshops in a um, on a flat uh, on a flat tool. Uh, we saw that we could um, um, find ways to, uh, to to lower the prices compared to uh, classic technology. So th these are the major points that that, that, that pushed us to uh, to develop this. So let us go a bit forward on the video. Um, so here, okay. So um, just move a bit forward, okay. So this is uh, here. You see the what will be the extension of our rig within uh, one year from now. So what I show you just before is what is under fabrication now, and that will be tested um, from uh, September two twenty one, and uh, in two twenty two. We'll install, um, we'll extend the mass of the on the sail. So what you see now on the screen is the is what will be the f our first uh, um, solid sail uh, uh, rig uh, for our line of uh, cruising ships uh, called Silences. So each mass will will uh, receive 1,500 square meters of sails. Made from um, a main sail of 1,200 1, square meters in uh, the solid sail. On the on the jib will be uh, 200 square meters. Uh, the first version of the jib will be in a classic soft soft sail, but we are working now um, on a 
on a new version of solid state that can be used also as a jib. So um, this will not be ready uh, um, within the next month, but the first uh, real test will start in um, September. So it, it should be uh, ready for the market within uh, maybe 12 to 18 months. So, so we are now going, now going to look at the uh, different uh, um, operations um, uh, of this rig. So the first one, uh, so as you can see, the, the rig is, uh, is rotating fully on its axis. And now we look to what is really the, uh, the major point of solid state technology is, is, the, is the way we can fold these sails. Uh, everyone was uh, sailed on a um, classic, uh, classic uh, uh, sailing yachts, uh, either from uh, 12, uh, 10 to 12 meters up to um, 40 meters uh, sailing boats. Uh, really, um, uh, getting down the sails in, in every wind is, can be something quite difficult to manage um, due to the, uh, what I told you about the, about the um, flapping movement of the, of the sails in, uh, when the sails in, into the wind. And so as, as a solid sail is made from a completely flat panel, if you see here, so this is a panel. So wh when we lower the sail, the panel, the, the ballast stone is head to the wind with zero incidence. Then each panel is completely flat, zero curvature. On, uh, we, we have a textile uh, hinges here, the, the four corners of the panels. On the, uh, the side, it says just um, do downs like a kind of a huge uh, Venetian store. So, so you see it. So, this, uh, this is a very, um, um, this is a very interesting point of this uh, te technology, especially for the safety of the crew. I'll just go back a, a bit on the video. Okay. Uh, so, so, so now let, let us uh, go move uh, forward to another point of our rig is that if you install a rig on, on large ships, then you have the, uh, you have to be able to uh, to can the rig, either to go underneath a bridge or uh, against Ukraine for um, commercial operations or and all this kind of um, of use. And so we 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 developed um, um, a narrow rig that can can uh, to uh, up to seventy degrees. Uh, to allow the ships to go underneath the bridges. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite a major engineering uh, challenge, but uh, so far it's, uh, it's, um, it's going well. We, um, if you come to Saint-Nazaire within uh, uh, something like October, uh, you will see this kind of test uh, uh, visible from uh, outside, uh, outside Chantier de l'Atlantique. Uh, so um, yes, so that that's it. So just to summarize um, where where we are with uh, with our solid sail is that the so our, our first of series is uh, under fabrication. So what is on the screen now? Uh, the, um, the test uh, will start. Uh, so of this first of series will start in uh, in. Um, First test, first test, so in July, and on a, on a full test, we'll say that the uh, September, October. So it, uh, it will be a, a major step for um, uh, development. Okay, thank you very much, Nicholas. Uh, very, very, very interesting. If you could just close down your screen. Okay. That, that's great. Um, I was just going to say, so um, so I have an open invitation to come to uh, San Nazaire to see the rig in October. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> I would love. I, hopefully, with all of the COVID situation, 
that would be fantastic. But it looks very impressive. Um, I just had a couple of questions about, uh, you mentioned that the, the material of the solid sail is a membrane. What, what actual materials are you using? So, the, so each panel is made of um, uh, um, a frame on the uh, outside of the, of the panel on a membrane uh, um, in the middle. So the membrane today is, uh, is made of, um, of, um, of, of glass fiber. Mm -hmm. And um, on the outside is made of uh, carbon fiber. So the frame is carbon fiber and the, and the membrane is um, glass fiber. And taking that materials question to the, the rig itself, um, so the, are you thinking steel? Are you thinking carbon fiber for, for the mass? The, the, the mass is carbon fiber, yes. Right, right. Uh, so so the, the mass we are fabricating now is, is not the, the highest mass in the world. It's, uh, uh, we are not competing in that. Uh, I think we are maybe two meters shorter than the biggest one, but uh, this this was not our uh, our goal. Uh, no, but we, it, it's the strongest one. We we were achieving a, a one uh, one hundred and fifty millimeters of uh, of uh, of carbon in in fitness. So it's it's quite huge. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll we'll let you off the two meters. I think uh, you could probably say you'll be the largest commercial rig. Out yeah, that's for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, you, you mentioned that you know the uh, once the testing is complete, sort of twelve to eighteen months to come into the market. Um, I was just wondering which which markets are you specifically looking at? I know that obviously Chantier d'Atlantique specialises in the cruise market, so I'm sure that is a, a, a prime market. But what other markets are you looking at? Yeah, so so yes, we 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 started developing this technology for our cruise market first, uh, but then the technology itself can be used on any market. Um, it, for 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 the small for the small boats, let us say small boats uh, uh, from thirty or fifty meters long, the smallest ones, um, will will uh, will be in competition with classic rig. Mm -hmm. So. We do not think that it will be our first market, but uh, but maybe the super yachts uh, market can be interested in this technology because the, the safety of use and the easiness of use of the uh, when you have to to set the sail up or down, uh, I think can be interesting for 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 this uh, very special market. But it's um, super yacht is is very specific. We uh, we. we we, we don't know how they will react um, with this. Uh, but then after that, we are looking to um, to any um, to any commercial vessels. Let us say that the um, the the freight carriers, like uh, for uh, petrol or gas or, or bulk carriers, uh, um, are better candidates than. Uh, than a row, row uh, or, um, or, um, or container ships because of the of the um, um, center of gravity on uh, on eight in, in general. But uh, so we think that it would be the, the first one. On um, if if we discuss about um, uh, are we looking for brand new boats or or refit? We we think that the it, it will be a quite costful technology in uh, in, in general. I mean, it will the the um, uh, so uh, as it is quite costful, um, it will be it will be very difficult to install uh, in a refit case because uh, uh, then the return on, on investment will be only calculated on the uh, expected um, time that. Uh, um, that will last for this ship, and uh, it, it might be a real issue. So we, we do not think that that the uh, that the refit is is a good market to go for. Right. And so so, so new, uh, new build yes. markets or higher value, higher value asset. Yes, and also if you want that the 
that the boat, uh, that the ship is able to, um, to use uh, wind propulsion, you have to design a sailboat on, a, on the, uh, so the, um, the, the hull will not have exactly the same, uh, uh, the same design on the same way show that uh, on, a, on a other ship. So we, we, we definitely think that the right way is to go for new building. Yeah, no, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'm just wondering, you know, Chantier d'Atlantique is, is primarily a shipbuilding company. Um, so why is the company looking at wind propulsion technologies and, and developing the technologies themselves? Uh, we, we, we are convinced uh, since years that we have to lower, to, I mean, to improve the, uh, the impact of our ships on, on, uh, in general on the uh, environment, uh, because we, we do think that the, um, uh, the customers of our customers will will ask for very uh, uh, for better um, uh, for better ships regarding to the um, to their impact on the environment. So, on the, uh, if you look to uh, let us what we could call um, green technology, the greenest is is, is, um, is a win. Uh, so. Um, so this is uh, the reason why we look to this very, um, very early. Uh, so we started seriously to make studies and to present um, a concept in, uh, in different um, places, uh, something like 10 years ago. And um, these, these objects, I mean, uh, the, um, the rigs and the sails are, are so big that we, um, we we didn't see any suppliers uh, at this moment that uh, I, I mean a few years ago that could have solutions ready for the market and so we we, we uh, decided to develop our own solutions and to um, and so and to be to more the um, uh, rig uh, rig makers for ve for commercial ships not for small ships. The, the, I, I think that um, yes, the, the lower limit of our solution will be on 50 meters long ships, 50, so quite, 50 quite, meters. So quite a pioneering kind of uh, vision from a large company, you know, that, that that's, yes. it's, this it's is a correct. unusual, yeah. Yes, this is correct, and it's fully unusual, I uh, agree with you, <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's very challenging and interesting. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it, it takes takes some people out of their comfort zone a little bit. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, quite a lot of innovation going on there. Um, I, I remember seeing the Silent Seas cruise, uh, the model of the vessel, uh, back I think 2018. I think it was shown at uh, one of the yes, Miami. Cruise. Miami, yes. That's right, and a beautiful design. I mean, really beautiful design. What what has been the reaction of the industry to both the Silent Seas cruise um, uh, vessel design, and also now increasingly the the, the solid sail system? Um, have you had much feedback from the industry itself, from ship owners? Yes, many ship owners came came to us on the. Uh, I will obviously do not give any names, but uh, uh, yes, more than one for sure. Uh, let us, yes, a few ones. And uh, that, so I'm not involved in the commercial thing, so I will not speak a lot of it, but yes, this gave um, a very, um, uh, this had a very good impact on the, uh, on our potential customers and many came to us saying, okay, but is this something that you can build or is it just a concept? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, we, this is why we, we decided to, to build the first rig, first of series of the rigs, just to show that this is really not a concept, it's real technology, it's working. And I think, you know, that, that's, that's very, in a sense, that's very much the stage or even a little bit before the stage of the, the demonstrators for, for things like wing sails, for, for new designs. We have flatner rotors in the market, uh, early stage in the market already, but there's a, 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 a pipeline of other projects coming through. So I think this is gonna be really interesting. I have, a, I have a question about the, 
so a little bit about the barriers. Um, you know, do you see any real safety or technical barriers to wind propulsion coming into the market? Um, obviously, a, a focus on, on the solid sail system, but in general, the wider wind propulsion technology uh, toolbox, if you like. Let us say the, um, the, 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 the first one might be the cost. Um, uh, for, 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 for different reasons. Um, first of all, the, um, the society today is used that to, to get, um, to have um, um, schedules for ships, either cruising ships or uh, commercial ships that just arrive in time uh, at Viabo on you. And, and they, they get these schedules a month uh, before, and they, we, everybody holds it. So, uh, and so if you if you order anything on the internet, you you um, you want it to be delivered to you within two or, or three weeks, and so on. So, uh, and so the, the commercial um, activity is based on that. So, and this is um, this is not in accordance at all with the fact that the wind is varying. On a, so sometimes you have no wind, uh, like today is a medium wind. I look inside of my office. Today is a, is a, is a medium wind. So the, then you could think about uh, uh, selling even big, big, big ships uh, uh, only uh, powered by, by, by wind. But uh, two days ago, it was no wind at all. So in this case, you obviously either you accept to wait or you put the um, um, a classic propulsion uh, um, to um, to power the ship. So, so, so the first, um, so the first uh, barrier to the market, I think, will be the, the price and the uh, the the fact that the society uh, <clears throat> might accept that the schedule. Uh, is something that we can uh, push a bit. For example, mm -hmm. if you if you go for cruising industry, um, I think that the the owners will uh, will have to think about uh, how to use in the best way the um, uh, the cruising ships uh, powered by wind. And for example, uh, they will say, okay, come on board for one week. Uh, maybe we'll go to Corsica or we'll go to Sardinia or or to Genova or whatever, depending on the wind. So it, it, will, it will be different, for sure. So uh, if if we speak about um, uh, if we speak about uh, really um, uh, engineering engineering barriers, um, technical issues, um, there are uh, I don't see anyone so far. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just uh, the point is just to. Uh, to start to consolidate a different knowledges on a, and to put them in a, in a, in one single object, but uh, uh, we are so we, we have finalized fully finalized the um, our engineering um, uh, development, and we did not find um, um, difficulties that that uh, we cannot deal with. So it's uh, so it's it's kind of it's a little bit like a. Um, you know, you're, you're taking a look at various different systems and it's a, it's a kind of bringing those systems together and yeah. finding the optimal, optimal let us say design. That, yes, let us say that everything which is um, um, underneath the gooseneck, I mean, the, uh, um, so, uh, which is um, underneath the boom of the balestron, mm -hmm. uh, everything which is underneath is, is very linked to uh, to heavy lift, um, heavy lift technologies, very large bearings, engine to uh, engine on hydraulic pumps to move this, and everything which is higher than the boom is uh, directly linked to the uh, um, to the to the uh, sailing on a superior technology. Mm. So it's a mix in between the two, and this is why we we developed that also. Uh, in uh, in France, because there is a high level of knowledge in, uh, especially in uh, in uh, racing on a superior technology uh, for for sailing boats. So we we could find very easily uh, people who are very um, uh, 
competent to uh, to build these uh, different uh, uh, systems. Yeah. The, the the only point was just to 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 tell them, okay, you you know how to deal with uh, with, for example, a mast of uh, twenty five or thirty meters. We'll just move to eighty. So, <laughs> how can we just, do? just move to eighty? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that that's a growing trend, or at least I'm seeing it as a growing trend, of um, engineers, of designers, naval architects that have cut their teeth in the racing world, in the yachting world, but are now coming into the commercial world and bringing new ways of doing things, uh, new ways of analyzing the systems and uh, um, certainly yes. optimizing the materials. Yes, you are true. And, and, and this is a very interesting point because what we can see is that the, the all the engineering offices, when they start to to work on this uh, on this uh, type of project, they, they only think about um, efficiency of the of the rig in a, in a racing conditions. Mm -hmm. But uh, we uh, we are on commercial ships, so the uh, the first point is the reliability of the of the uh, of the equipment and the easiness of use. The, the performance of the rig is important, but it, it's on level two. It's not on level one. Um, if you are sailing, you know that if you want to sail between, um, um, so you, it's impossible to sail with an upper and wind angle which is less than 15 degrees. This does not just impossible. But uh, then all of the racing yachts, I was speaking about America's Cup before, they are sailing with between, uh, let's say, 15 to uh, uh, to, to, to 50 uh, apparent wind angle, so incidence uh, compared to the wind. And, um, and so the, 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 so the, for those boats, they, they, they need to have uh, to, to get a very large and very efficient appendages in the water just to, right. to, to balance the aerodynamic uh, forces that, that, uh, that enter into, um, in, into the equation. But for uh, our type of uh, sailing on commercial ship, we'll, we'll be sailing with, between, uh, let us say, 50 or 40 uh, upon wind angle up to uh, 90 or, or, or up to 90. So it's, uh, the, the efficiency of the rig is very different. We are rather looking to the same points of, of operation. <laughs> That sort of change in perspective for the designers, for the engineers that are working on this, that, you know, that are coming from that area. I'd, I'd like to expand that a little bit to that change in perspective in the industry as a whole. Um, you've been in the industry for a few years. You've, you don't mind me, don't mind me saying. You have quite a bit of experience, a little bit longer than me, um, only a little bit. Um, what changes have you seen in the industry around, say, say from the beginning of uh, the projects that you've been working on you know, with the Sun and Seas and the Solid Sail until today? What are the changes in perspective that you're seeing around the acceptance of wind propulsion as a solution for decarbonizing the ships? Um... So we, 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 we still are at the very beginning of this, uh, of this uh, very nice story, let us say. Um, what we could see is that the, uh, five years ago, we, we just had contact with um, um, marketing people from the, from the cruise ship companies, okay, uh, because they were convinced that they, they had to move there they offer to something which is a bit more um, in in line with the with the, the new um, um, with the acceptation of the uh, of the society regarding to the uh, uh, environmental issues. Um, but uh, so they were just trying to understand: is that possible? When when will it arrive on the market and so far? Um, and so we could see that no, we um, and it is changing every day. We we have contact with many potential customers, uh, either with uh, cruising ships, commercial ship, or 
also quite a lot of projects uh, coming from the um, uh, science, scientist uh, ship, you know, which are making a campaign uh, uh, to uh, explore the, the poles or uh, this kind of, um, of works. Um, so we, we, we see that there is a real interest from the community uh, trying to understand what is ready for the market, uh, what will it change on the, on the, compared to the exist, existing ships on these kind of issues. And uh, we, we do hope that this will continue within the two, um, two next years or three next years, and then these, uh, the, um, the market will be big enough to really uh, develop a, a large, uh, large rig um, um, sales. Yeah, and I think, I think all the indicators at the moment is that that is definitely the, 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 the direction of travel. I mean, the momentum is growing, the interest is growing. Um, and it's really up to us to, to, to see, or it's up to you to see the delivery of these <laughs> systems into the market. Now, um, I'm just a little conscious of the time. And what I'd like to do is just finish off with a maybe three or four quick fire questions. So if you could just keep your answers to, you know, one or two phrases, uh, that would be brilliant. So um, first question is, what is the most difficult issue you or your team have had to deal with? Um, we, 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 we did not have a very big issue. We are very lucky because our top management gave us the, uh, what we need uh, since five years now to, to develop in a, in a, I mean, in a good way, the, the, uh, the concept. So, we, we pass through all of our um, uh, intermediate uh, points. So we, we, there, there is no, no major difficulties. The, the only point was just to, let us say, to, um, to put everything uh, together in a, in a single object, but uh, um, th th there was not major difficulties. I think, I think that support, you know, the capacity, the finance behind, you know, a system like this, it's a big project. So if you've got yes. adequate support, then then I, I think that that makes a lot of issues go away. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and who knows? We might see even sort of budgets for America Cup yachts coming in for for commercial rig developments in the future. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, yeah. But okay, so not big issues. Uh, what's your most frequently asked question when someone comes to see? your rig systems or looking at your cruise uh, cruise vessel designs, the sun and sea designs. What's the most frequently asked question? Yeah. Um, the, yeah, the most frequently asked question is, uh, is how can we, um, um, how can we make a, an efficient sail uh, with a sail which is uh, built from, uh, with flat panels mm. at, at, at the beginning. And uh, so it's uh, so we are really obliged to um, to uh, to communicate a lot with our uh, prospects and uh, potential customers to explain them uh, how it works uh, uh, with this two uh, two level of use. Once one level when you fold the sail so it's fully flat, and one <clears throat> when when you put the sail uh, into the wind with some incidents and that. It, it, and then it gets uh, gets some volume like a normal say, say. Right, right. And that leads me on to uh, uh, my my third question, which is, what is the most common misconception or mistake around wind propulsion technologies? And oh, yeah, and and you perhaps your design as well. Um, and how how do you actually kind of dispel that or deal with that? So what mis what's the biggest mistake that most people make when they're when they're looking at wind propulsion technology? Um, the, 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 the biggest mistake they they, they 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 usually make is that they always compare that to uh, to um, to racing use. Mm -hmm. like, um, on um, on that for commercial ships, the use is not exactly the same. On um, 
and especially most of the people we discuss with, they they do not have any idea of uh, of how the wind is going in uh, in uh, I mean in, in open seas and uh, what, what will be the condition that they, they will encounter during the sailing and and so on. And um, I, I'm issued from the sailing community on. Um, and uh, when you sail offshore, you never go straight. And, I mean, you always uh, take um, uh, you always take um, uh, a trajectory that will uh, make you use in the best uh, way the wind that you will uh, that you will get. You never go straight. On the on so the on the uh, commercial ship um, community today, they are just used to go straight. So that, that we, so, so this is a major uh, difference in the way you you can see the wind. Right, and I'm going I'm going to drop one in. Uh, the carbon footprint or the the environmental footprint of the systems. Now we're in early stages of development of wind propulsion technology, but this is a question I sometimes get asked, quite or increasingly asked by uh, shipping companies and by by others. Um, uh, whether we're assessing the environmental impact of the construction of the systems and the materials that are being used. So is there, is there a plan to do that in, uh, with the solid sail? So I, I have no numbers in, in, in my head, so I, I cannot uh, give us, um, uh, I mean, uh, precise uh, enough numbers on those. Uh, what I would say is that if you take um, uh, our silences project, I think it will be a, a ship that will weigh something like uh, um, 30 uh, thousand tons. Mm -hmm. And the, the three weeks will be uh, something like um, 300 tons in total, 100 tons per, per week. Uh, with, um, with um, two thirds of steel of uh, on, on one third of, uh, of carbon, something like. Right. So, right. so basically we compared uh, 300 tons to 30,000 tons uh, using the same level of technology on a, and so on, uh, of impact on the, um, uh, on the environment regarding their, their fabrication. So I think this is very low, this is not, um, um, this, this is not a real subject so far. Even if we can all, always do better than we do, but uh, sure. but but the, the best improvement is that once it has been launched, I mean, it's it's for thirty years and there is um, no, nothing more to do. Yeah, and that longevity is is one of the key issues. Yeah, um, which is really interesting. But maybe for another day we can talk about longevity. Mm -hmm. My last question is uh, on a on a on a wider issue for some of our listeners. Uh, or some of our watchers is um, you know is are you currently recruiting or are you expanding the team that's working on the solid cell systems? Yes, we so so uh, when we started, uh, let us say I was alone in f five years ago <laughs> and uh, use, using a few um, subcontractors on some uh, studies, but. Uh, and uh, no, I think that in Chantier, we might be something like 10 or 15 uh, uh, working full time. And in our subcontractors and makers, uh, uh, you can add the same or be, maybe. So we are something like between 25 and uh, 35 uh, full time at this moment just to develop this. So, um, so the, the, yes, but, but this is only, I mean, for the uh, for our first of series. So, if, if the market is um, um, is going on uh, as we expect, yes, this would create employees for for, for sure. Yeah. So I, just, I, I cannot give numbers like this, but I, I think that um, it could be between um, uh, fifty on uh, two hundred people in France very soon. Yeah, yeah. So some opportunities coming in the pipeline. Yes, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, on, the, on the fact that it's um, it, it's a green technology, then we can see that the young people are very interested in. So we, we think we hope that we'll get the, the best guide 
<laughs> by this fact. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And that's very important. It's not just jobs. It's not just quality jobs, but it's also filling those jobs with people that are, are passionate about what they're doing as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nicholas, thank you very much. I'm going to give you like a one minute slot here just to kind of summarize, give us a takeaway um, from, you know, what you've been talking about today. Um, I'll hand it over to you. And uh, then after that, we'll do our close. So Nicholas, you've got one minute to summarize what you've been saying to us. <laughs> okay, in one minute. Uh, so solid sale on, uh, on the, um, and it's uh, Valestron rig is, uh, is ready for the market uh, right now. Uh, so we, we can, uh, and we can show, uh, we'll, uh, we can show the our full rig uh, demonstrator uh, to, uh, to different customers from, uh, from September, October in, um, in use in, uh, in San Jose. So it's the best way to prove that, it, that this works. Fantastic, fantastic. I, I look forward to uh, coming down to San Nazaire in the not too distant future and to see the, the test route, um, yes, which looks fantastic. You're welcome, David. Ah, merci beaucoup, <laughs> merci. Uh, so I'd like to say you know, thank you to Nicholas Abbevin, uh, Senior Project Manager or Senior Project Engineer at Chantier d'Atlantique, specializing in these sales and rigs. Um, and if any of the viewers have additional questions, if you'd like to send those to me or to Nicholas directly, um, uh, then I'm more than happy to provide Nicholas's uh, 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 email address uh, directly. So please contact me and I'll pass uh, Nicholas's uh, email address over to you. Um, and I'd just like to say uh, once again, thank you, Nicholas. Uh Thank you, Gavin. Yeah, and I hope to welcome you back uh, maybe in sort of six to nine months for, a, for an update of how the project's going. I'm sure there'll be some really exciting developments there. And thank you to all the viewers uh, watching this. Uh, we will have another Listening to the Wind interview next week. And in the meantime, fair winds, stay safe and well. And thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Gavin.